Hello, good morning. Uh, so welcome to our webinar this morning. Uh, good afternoon as well for those in other region. We're going to talk today about our joint webinar between uh, MC Things and Tago. I'm glad that you guys could make it. Uh, I'm Fabio Rosa, the CEO and co-founder of Tago. Roberto Kanoff, also from Tago, is going to be presenting uh, today during our webinar. Thomas Edward, our uh, the account executive from MEC Things, also is going to make the introduction and uh, description about MEC Things stuff. So during the presentation, uh, everybody will be uh, in the listen-only mode, and uh, feel free to use our chat. You should be seeing the chat. Make sure that uh, you make your question, your comments, and during the presentation, we will be doing as much as we can to answer uh, your questions. If you don't do that during the presentation, we'll be glad to answer them during the Q&A. Uh, this video is being recorded, and uh, it will be available at the end of the webinar, a couple of hours uh, later, for you to share and uh, use it as you need it. Just a quick poll here. Make sure that everybody can hear me well. If you can, just uh, write in chat. If you can hear me, I would appreciate. OK. So this is the agenda. So what we're going to learn here today, basically, is uh, about MC things. Thomas is going to talk about the hardware, how to connect the hardware, how to connect to Tago. Then I'm going to introduce a Tago platform, and Roberto is going to focus on the integration. So he's going to present the platform. It will be a real demo, so you can understand in the practical side how to connect Tago platform with the MC things. And at the end, we're going to have the Q&A, and uh, as time is allowed, we're going to talk about what's coming uh, from both companies. So now I want to pass uh, the word to Thomas so he can introduce to you guys uh, about MEC Things. Thomas? Great. Thanks, Fabio. And thank you, everybody, for attending the webinar. We're excited to chat with you all today and uh, looking forward to any questions or comments that you have at the end of the webinar. Let's move to the next slide here. And I'm going to introduce myself again. My name is Thomas Edworthy. I'm the account executive here at MC Things. MC Things stands for Measure and Control Things. We've been around for about three years. And we're based uh, up north in, in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. So very, very cold this morning. Um, and so hopefully you guys are, are in much warmer areas than I am. You can learn a little bit more about MC Things if you go to our website. It's www.mcthings.com. And as you can see on this main slide here, we really focus on connecting things to the internet that can't be plugged in. And what I mean by when I say that is battery operated low power wireless devices that can be mounted and put onto anything and start to measure that information and get that and get that data to the cloud. So that's really what we focus on is ultra low power and low cost devices. Move to the next slide here. As I just mentioned, of course, low cost. Part of our platform is also tailored and designed to scale up. So not only your 100 sensors, your 1,000 sensors, but actually we've been able to design our platform to manage even up to hundreds of thousands or even millions of devices out in the world. Um, of course, all our devices are, are set up to be ultra low power. Depending on how you program them, they can last between five and 10 years on a couple AA batteries, um, which is really, really nice in terms of cost of ownership and the cost of uh, maintenance over time. You can actually reduce the cost that it takes over time as well. We also, of course, have developed our platform to be rapid uh, on development. And I'll get into that a little bit later on how that all works. Uh, we, of course, have different use cases, and I'll get to that in the next slide. So this is kind of an example of some of the slide or some of the uh, use cases that we're involved with. We work in asset tracking. That's a major uh, use case within IoT. So not just tracking, for example, vehicles, but what about starting to track things like shipments, um, cold chain, let's say that you know, maybe you can't plug in or doesn't have a power supply. 
this is where our technology is very well suited because we are all battery operated and they can last for years and years and years. You can also look at different uh, use cases in the rental industry. So reducing the, th the, the loss or the theft of, of equipment, maybe that's in agriculture, maybe that's in any type of industry. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the main industries that we work in. We also work in agriculture. So this is you know, monitoring temperatures in fields, maybe in gr uh, greenhouse operations. Um, also, you know, sort of involves the cold chain side of things. So this is, again, an, another uh, area that we work in very closely. And of course, we also work in areas like smart cities. Smart cities is a, is a big topic in IoT, and there's tons and tons of different ideas in, in smart cities type of things. So, for example, monitoring streetlights. Um, what about is there parking spaces available in public city operated parking lots? Uh, lots and lots of different scenarios and use cases there. We also work, of course, in the food industry. I kind of mentioned the cold chain and retail. And then really, we work in almost any and all industries. And we'll get into this a little bit later as I talk about the versatility of our platform. But we don't subscribe to one vertical or one industry. We're doing work from A to Z in terms of animal tracking to cold chain management to billboard mo lighting monitoring. So really, we, we, we work in all different types of industries. And it's part of the, the value of our platform is that you can customize the devices to suit your needs. One thing that might be surprising to some people is that we actually do all of our own manufacturing in-house in, here in Canada. Um, we actually have a, a full production line. We actually have the same machine as the iPhone 10, So we can pump out a lot of devices very quickly. A couple of the reasons why we do this is that we actually get to control our own IP. We have reduced delayed uh, waiting times. We don't have to send devices or our equipment to get built in China or Mexico or other areas. We do it in-house. It also allows us to rapidly turn around prototypes, especially when we're building customized devices for clients. We can make changes very quickly and, and build that in our, in our production facility. I'm going to now talk about uh, how the data moves within our platform. So as you can see on the screen here, we have multiple different types of devices, whether it's off the shelf or a customized device, whatever it might be. And again, you can learn a little bit more about our devices on our website. Basically what happens is the devices talk to our fully managed gateways. That wireless communication between the device and the gateway is what we call MC Air. Now it's a proprietary wireless low power protocol. It still works in that 2.4 gigahertz band, but it's actually designed to move on the outside of the frequency so it doesn't interfere with regular Wi-Fi signals. And one of the great things about our gateways is you can actually have over a thousand devices within range of a gateway and all that information can get consumed and forwarded to the cloud and then, as we'll see later, get captured and you can do some visualizations in uh, Tago and see what, your, what the data looks like that's coming from your devices. We also work with a network called Sigfox and I'm not sure if, if maybe the Tago guys will get into this a little bit later. They, they also work with Sigfox. And you can check out more about Sigfox at their website, www.sigfox.com. Basically, Sigfox is an LP WAN. It's a, it's a network designed for IoT devices. We also create devices that can communicate through Sigfox. So all this information either comes back to the cloud using Sigfox or gateways. It comes into our MC cloud system, which I'll get into a bit later, that is a highly securitized and highly scalable device management platform. And then from there, we send the information into Tago, and where you can analyze, store, visualize the data, and we'll, we'll have Roberto show uh, some of the really fancy features that Tego has uh, in their wheelhouse. So just moving on here, just to give you an idea, with MC Things and our technology, you can actually get proof of concepts or pilots up and running incredibly quickly. The reason that this is possible is that with our platform and our device, you actually write software, you're not writing firmware. So each device runs a virtual machine, and if you have any software background, you can act absolutely work with these devices. It also means that if you need to make changes to the device, how often you want to measure, for example, let's say a temperature. It's a very, very small line of code that anybody can change. So it's really, really nice in that you don't need that firmware skill set. You just work with software. And again, we've done multiple projects with clients where we've literally had the proof of concept up within hours or a couple days just to prove out that the technology works and start to visualize what kind of ROI 
is getting uh, returned from that use case. So moving on, uh, we do have some impressive devices that are coming out. This is uh, just an example of one, and I won't take too long on this. You can learn a little bit more about this on our website. But this is a really uh, versatile device that's coming out here soon. We call it the MC Track 330. So it has Sigfox, it has MC Air, it has also has a really interesting Wi-Fi location service. So this is, a, I've had a client call this the holy grail of location or asset tracking. With Wi-Fi location service, you can actually do indoor asset tracking and get really fairly relatively accurate locations within a warehouse or a building or a large facility. It doesn't use GPS, it uses Wi-Fi location. Really what that is, is it's looking at the Wi-Fi access points around you, captures that data, you send that out to the cloud and parse it through a database like Google or Skyhook who has all sorts of information on all the access points and all over the world. And it can send you out a Latin long based on, your, and on the device vicinity to those Wi-Fi access points. So if you want, you can Google that. It's a lot of people call it Wi-Fi sniffing, just to get an idea of how that concept works. But it's a very, very low power location uh, service. <clears throat> Excuse me. This device also uh, has multiple onboard sensors. It's got a built-in temperature sensor, accelerometer. We have the Wi-Fi location service. It also has optional humidity, altitude, distance, ambient light sensor. And we're also adding a, a new sensor to this uh, device that's going to be air quality sensor. <clears throat> so you can measure VOCs or volatile organic compounds uh, in the air and relay that information back to, to the cloud. Um, just to give you an idea, this device runs on two AA batteries. You can program this device and it can last, de depending on how you program it, it can last five to ten years. And the cost of these things in, in the sort of pop low populated device that has not a lot of sensors, just the basic sensors, are, is about $50 US. And the fully populated device that has all the sensors, it kind of runs in that $80 US in single units. So it's very low cost and uh, it can last quite a long time. So the cost of ownership is very low because all you need to do is replace a couple of AA batteries if it starts to, uh, starts to get low. All right, so moving on here, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the use cases that we've seen, either we've been involved with or we have clients working on. Um, this is an idea of a smart garbage can or smart, smart recycling bin. Now, a lot of you may have heard about this type of use case before. They've been doing this in, uh, in the city of Barcelona for a while. And the idea is that why, why not measure how full these bins are? Now, this may not be just garbage bins. You could look at food bins or grain bins in the agriculture industry or any type of bin that might be out there, even, for example, paper shredding bins. It's a great uh, way to sort of measure that. And the, the idea is that instead of picking up garbage cans or emptying them on a regular route, why not only empty them when they're full? So start to be efficient, you, you reduce your labor costs, and in this case with garbage cans, you can actually reduce the cost of resources in terms of how many garbage bags do you use. As an example, we have a client who has about 500 garbage cans in their facility. They're looking at implementing this type of solution, and they assume that if they only have to change 400 garbage cans a day instead of 500, they'll actually save about $10,000 a year in just reduced amounts of garbage bags alone, let alone the cost of labor and the efficiencies that come along with it. The other thing to keep in mind here is that there's also a customer satisfaction uh, point where if I start to measure my garbage cans and I find that a lot of them are over full all the time, that doesn't look good for my clients or customers in, in a shopping mall or a theme park. So now I can actually efficiently make sure that they're emptied and keep my customer satisfaction up at a high level. We move on to a couple other use cases, and, and again, there's some more information on our website. Just as an example, you know, we talk about measuring uh, porta potties or portable toilets, and you've seen these at different festivals or shows or anything that you've been. It's a kind of the same concept as garbage cans. A company puts them on a, a site and then comes back and checks on them on a regular basis. With our technology, you could do all sorts of things, like for example, how full are the garbage, or how full are the porta potties? How many times have they been used? You know, how many times has the door been open or closed? Did it get tipped over? What's the location? How much tissue paper or hand soap and all that type of stuff is, is available in the porta potty? So these are the types of things that are now possible to measure wirelessly with a battery operated device uh, with our technology that you, you really haven't seen up until this point. 
So that's one example, and again, it doesn't have to be porta potties, it could be almost anything. And really what I want you to, to you're looking at this webinar, is open your mind to what is possible out there. If you can attach a wireless battery operated device that can last five years, what can you measure? What industries are you working in or have clients in where this type of technology might be very, very valuable? Just moving on, there's of course lots of other uh, use cases. So for example, maybe measuring farm equipment. You can look at reducing the loss, theft notifications, how full are they, uh, you know, being efficient on recovering, them, all that type of stuff is also available. And one, I think one last one I have here is, you know, portable fencing. You don't really think about this stuff, but you see it around construction sites. Each section is worth a decent amount of money and you can measure, is there intrusion? Where are those, those uh, sections of fence? You could also start to do this where you can maybe reduce the amount of security personnel you need at a construction site because you can be alerted if the gate is opened or if some sort of intrusion happens on the fence. So these are just a couple of, of, of examples. And again, you can check out our website for more use cases. And I'm sure you all have a ton of ideas out there of, of different things that would be possible to do. And we're more than happy to discuss those with you. And we'll give you some contact info at the end of the webinar here. So moving on, just to give you an idea of how it is with working with MC Things. So first of all, what happens is uh, we look at the business case, we assess it. What's, what, are, what are the requirements, what do you need, and how does our technology fit? Once we define the requirements, we get into a proposal, and then we get started. So as an example, we have clients who have called us on a Monday, and we have proof of concept working on a Friday. We also have clients that have much bigger uh, projects that have a lot more requirements, and that time can sometimes take a couple weeks to put everything together and then get going. So it really depends on the use case. Our technology is working for very simple use cases, such as just measuring temperatures in restaurants and relaying that information to a dashboard, to as complicated as animal tracking or livestock wellness management and monitoring different variables in certain livestock areas and relaying that information back to sort of an operations center. So we really run the gamut on the, the difficulties and all of this is available for all of our clients to work with and we love to work with people to get their solutions up and running using our technology. So I just have a couple more slides here I'll go through. I want to touch a little bit about MC Cloud. As I mentioned earlier, MC Cloud is our highly scalable, highly secure device management uh, feature that's built into the MC Things platform. It allows you to provision up to millions of devices it allows you to develop and remotely access and program your devices or debug them anywhere in the world. So as an example, we can have a device in a, an office in Japan and I can work on that device from my office here in Canada and modify the programming at any time I want to. So it's a really, really nice feature. It allows you to, it opens up our platform to be very, very scalable and highly versatile. Um, as I mentioned, it's also quite secure. So there's security domains, permissions, organizations, um, and you can learn a little bit more about that on our website. It's one of the big things in IoT, there's all this talk about security and making sure that the, the platform is, is secure and, and safe. And we've put in a lot of effort and time to make sure that this is possible, as well as bringing it up to a highly scalable level. And again, we're more than happy to answer any questions that you might have at the end of the, of the webinar here about that. So last thing before I get into kind of the, the actual process of working with our technology and how it all works, I just want to bring up the fact that, you know, we don't visualize the data ourselves. We focus on getting data to the cloud. And this is why we work with fantastic partners like Tago, where we focus on getting the data to the cloud. You can customize the, the devices to suit your needs. And in Tago, once you receive the data, you can customize that data to suit your needs as well. So making informed business decisions, creating graphs, creating reports, all that stuff that you want to do with that data or monetize or make that data valuable, that's where Tago comes in and, and you'll see their dashboard and all the features that they have later in the, in the webinar when uh, Fabio and Roberto uh, walk you through that. Okay, quickly I'm just going to show you very high level what the process is and how easy this is to work with our devices. So first we provide an IDE, it's an integrated development environment, we call it MC Studio. In MC Studio is where you develop the code for your devices. We use a, our own programming language, it's called MC Script, and it's basically a subset of VB.net. 
So you, what you do is in MC Studio, you write your code, you work on it, you make sure everything is good and, ha and ha you're happy with it. And then what you do is you actually upload that to your security domain that lives within MC Cloud. Now MC Cloud, pop over here, is an online portal. It's ac accessible from anywhere in the world as long as you have internet. And essentially what happens is you upload your, your program you for your devices. You then register your devices, and I'll, I'll whip through this pretty quickly. You have a list of devices within your security domain. You can also have a look at when it's reported last, what are the details, everything that's involved with my device I can actually have a look at. Once I have my application and my device registered, I then need to set up an integration. And this is where I actually forward information to a company like Tago. I set it up in my webhook integration. So it's really looking at what's the endpoint or the URL that I want to send it to, what kind of credentials I need, authorization or bearer tokens, all that information so that I can get my information into Tago securely. And this is a slide here where you actually take the device token from your setup in Tago, and, and Roberto can kind of go through this later, and it allows you to make sure that the information is coming in Tago that's associated with that specific device that you've registered in MC Cloud. So I can see here where I've got everything set up. I also have a check mark saying that my data is, is going into Tago as expected. And then what I can do is actually select the list of applications. So if you remember from a couple slides back where I wrote my application and uploaded it to my cloud through MC Studio, I then select an application and I can deploy it. Now one thing that's really interesting, I just want to point this out, let's say you have a thousand devices out there and you want them all to change programming. Let's say you're taking temperature every 30 seconds and you want to change that to check a temperature every five minutes. You can change the programming, upload it or download it to all those devices that you want the programming to change to. And we also have the feature of when you want that change to take place. So for example, you have a thousand devices and starting January or July 1st, you want them all to change over to new programming. You can stage it so the device has that in programming waiting to go. And on July 1st, all those devices will switch over to the new programming. So it's an example of the versatility of what we provide in MC Cloud that allows you to manage thousands or more devices and easily modify the programming that you want to put onto them. So it can also look at the history of the application I've loaded and make sure, and this is really great if I have multiple people working in the application. And then of course, and we'll see this shortly in a, in a second here, this is an example of the data coming into a live uh, Tago dashboard. And again, you can download, you can do all sorts of stuff with the data. And I'll leave that for uh, Fabio and, and uh, Roberto to talk about. But I do appreciate the time for listening to me. Again, you can check out our website, mcthings.com. And please feel free to ask any questions and we'll be answering them at the end of the call. So uh, Fabio, Roberto, take it away. Okay, thank you, Thomas. So back to Tago here. So let's talk briefly to the dashboards and the analysis about how Tago works and what the differentiation of Tago. So first, Tago is the cloud platform. We focus on have end-to-end -end solution. We start from the data when it comes to our APIs and uh, bring this data from the sensors, from other sources of data up to the business. Okay, so we process this information in the middle. So you have the power to process that. We have five elements. These five elements are basically, the first one is device management. Uh, you can manage, you can disable the device, enable, create the devices. Uh, also, uh, you can uh, have the uh, certificate using our protocol. The other part is data storage. Everything is storage in our backend system. You are able to download the data. You are able to do a copy in your local database, things like that. The important thing is that the Tago start to differentiate here where we add the real-time analysis. What that means is that Tago is not only the dashboard, it's not only to store data, but also to process in real time. This real time can be very simple things like uh, convert temperature scale from Celsius to Fahrenheit. That's one example, but it's, you can have uh, image processing, linear regression, anything, and our customers really use that because that's what generated value. So you are able to upload your software to uh, Tago to run in real time. 
Also, we have the visualization. That's the, basically the dashboard. And dashboard and the mobile app as well. We have both uh, options. You can use our mobile app for free. And we have the notification. The notification uh, like SMS, push notification for our mobile app, for the browser, and also the integration. We know that in some cases, customers want to integrate with their backend system, with their CRM, ERP system, so it's possible to integrate that. So at the high level, that's what Tago in the cloud. We spend uh, thousands and thousands of hours in the development. Uh, our cloud system is composed not only by the base component, but for example, we add a lot of features and uh, all this information is in our website. You can tago.io and uh, you're gonna get uh, details about each one, but just to tell you about two or three here, audit log. The audit log, for example, is a feature that allow you as a developer or as an administrator of your solution to see when people log, when they delete the device, create the device, create the dashboard, or modify anything. Uh, another thing that we have is also the share capability. It's possible and very used, by the way, by developers to give the option for the users to share dashboards, not to only keep for them, but share for others. And that we're gonna show how that to work, okay? As uh, Thomas mentioned before about MC Things, uh, we are also in the different verticals. Uh, we are not only one, for example, we have application in the agric uh, agriculture, uh, cooling uh, management, in services, uh, transportation, logistic, smart city. And the nice things here is that some of those applications were designed by us, but uh, many of those, in fact, were designed by the customer directly. So we don't need to be involved in each of them because our tool, again, is available, it's available online, you sign up, you understand how this works and you can implement the, the solution. But it, it really shows how versatile uh, the tool is because you really have the key components for different applications. And of course, people are always asking about differentiation when we compare with other solutions. And I don't think it's one specific feature, but it's a combination of some features to make sure that it's very easy to use in real. It's not only for the demo, not only for concept, but really for sale and to be deployed. For example, we have the Explore application. What it means is that we start to deliver applications where users can log in at Tago and can get a solution. Uh, is ready, template is ready, so they don't need to search from this switch and can have the application there. Another one is uh, data rotation in, in the user backup. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there is cost to store the data, uh, but sometimes users don't want to keep it forever. They want to keep, let's say, data for 30 days. We have an option for that. You just say, hey, keep the data for uh, 20 days or 30 days, and we keep it there. So there are a lot of features that works very well together. So to complete, to create a solution, we know that we need some parts. One part, as I mentioned before, is visualization. So that gives you a flavor about some kind of a visualization. You can get more information in our website, in our use cases. But here you can see that we have uh, the basic things like the coach, the dials, tables. Then you have the maps, for example, the maps it's possible to add uh, images. It's possible to change the status of this image, add the links when the when this click the pin. Also have heat maps. So it's not only the base. It's really to have a set of tools that help to build the whole solution. And I think the visual uh, visualization here is very good. The other part that's you not know, that's important is about collaboration. So one thing that we have is the share. For example, here in the mobile app, if we go to uh, App Store or, or, or Google, you can download the app, and uh, as soon as you create the dashboard or your customer use your dashboard, they can share. They can share for one hour. Say, hey, I have a problem in my compressor. I wanted this person to take a look just for one hour, not forever. Then you share for one hour, and this other person, you have access to the same thing as you have in the data dashboard only for one hour. So that kind of feature that really help in the, in the solution. 
when we talk about integration, if you ask about how and what kind of device can be connected, uh, is a lot. As soon as they are able to change uh, uh, the IP port or post data to MQTT or HTTP, HTTP, you'll be able to communicate with Etago. Then we integrate with Google, we integrate with our KML, Google Earth, and uh, we have seen a lot of applications where we not only show the dashboard, the values in real time, but also generate reports. So simple report is normally what people are looking when they talk about connect the product. So like things like, uh, I want to receive a report every morning, 7 a.m. Uh, with the issues that they have in my devices, or send me a link with the map when they're traveling or opening, when they arrive there, is also possible. So we have a template for that. Uh, some of them are already available in our uh, repository. Roberto is gonna talk about that. And the others, you can always contact us and uh, we can make available. Because the idea is really that you can bring the tools ready to, to be used. So now, uh, before we jump here for the demo part with Roberto, just to make sure uh, you'll be aware that you can log in for free and sign up, create an account. If you are a developer, as I believe most of you are the developer, you can uh, you should select this option here, I am a developer, because in this way, you're gonna have all the options available for you. Okay, um, now let me hand this to Roberto. I am Roberto, as, as Fabio said. I am a software developer, and I'm from using the Anythings device. So, uh, before I show you the demo, first I need to share my screen. So, um, can you guys see my screen? Is, is everything okay? Just, just uh, type something in the... Okay, someone's typing. Okay, so this is our platform admin. Um, in here, you can create applications and you can publish these applications for your customers to, to use. And for, to, for the developers to create the applications, we have four basic tools. Uh, with these tools, you can create any kind of application using used by IoT. If you create an account right now, uh, your account will be uh, will, will have this dashboard. This is a bus line simulator. Um, here in the map, you can see some some buses, and this is just to show you how the dashboard works and uh, the features you can have. Here are some data that are generated by these buses, and uh, you can install more applications if you want. We have lots of demos to, for the users to use. So, uh, now I'm, I'm going to talk about the tools for the developers to create their applications. We, we basically use four tools, and these tools are the devices, the buckets, analysis, and actions. The device, uh, this is just, uh, we say that the device is a virtual representation of your real device. For example, if we have a thermostat, or uh, in this case, we have the MC Things device, we will have this, de this device here at Tago. In this account, I have this main thermostat. And another thing, the device is, the, is where the data comes to Tago. So if you need to post data to Tago, you, you have to use a device. As, um, as Thomas showed, we have the tokens and everything over here. I won't show the token here, but uh, we have the, the, the settings on, on the devices. And you can have multiple devices depending on your application. Um, after the device, we can talk about the bucket. You can think of the bucket as a database. In, in our buckets, uh, we store all, all of your data in here. As Fabio said, we can uh, choose how long you want to, for your data to be stored. So 
you can choose to have your data stored just for a month or forever, whatever you want. And uh, just as, as a normal application, you need data, uh, database. You can have multiple databases as well. And all the data that is sent to your devices uh, goes to the bucket. So you can have one or multiple devices linked to a bucket sending data to, to the same database. Uh, another thing that we have is the analysis. Analysis is a very, very powerful thing that we have because these are scripts. You can build anything you want in here. For example, you can just build a, a simple conversion for a, a temperature conversion. If your device sends data in, in Celsius you, and you need to show your client in Fahrenheit, you can just create a, a small conversion over here. Or you can build very complex applications, for example, end user applications or uh, anything you want. In fact, because this this is just a script, and you can run these scripts on Tagle, or you can run them on your servers if you want. We have this option as well. And about the action, actions are uh, are things that Tagle does when some criteria is met. For example, uh, my temperature on, on a device is too high, so I need we need to alert someone or. Uh, we need to uh, technician to take a look. So we can create actions. Uh, for example, we have push push notifications. You can have these notifications on your browser or on your phone using the Tagle app. You can send emails and SMS, run analysis. So if something happens, you you want to execute some script. Uh, we can publish it to MQTT or we can post the data to uh, another endpoint if you want. So. With these four options, you can create a lot of uh, a lot of different applications, and of course, we have the explore. This is where uh, developers can publish their applications. So now I'm going to show you the the application that we, we made using the MC Things sensor. So just a second here. This is Thomas' account. So we I'm going to show you. The, the application we made. So here we have two devices sending data to Tagle right now. One of these devices is the MC Track 330 that we talked about, uh, Thomas talked about a little earlier. And here uh, you can see that we have, uh, this is the device, if you, if you guys see the, there is an image of the device. And then uh, we have a temperature over here. It's a real time temperature. The device is sending this uh, in a couple of minutes. And we have a distance sensor, so th this is the distance, and we have a uh, lux sensor as well. So you can build these dashboards for the for your users to to use to work on it. You can modify them as as you want. For example, I can resize uh, the the dashboard, add new widgets, and do whatever you you, you need to do to to build your application. For example, in here I had. Uh, we have a sh uh, chart to show the history of the temperature, or we can add a lot of new widgets. I won't show all of the, all of the widgets because we wouldn't have time for this, but just for you guys to have an idea of how time works. And using using MC Things sensors, we create an application. This is just a sample to to see the data coming in, but now we have a real uh, real application over here. Uh, this application is a fridge, as we call it, fridge demo. What this what this does is it collects the temperature. So this sensor, the MC one hundred and twenty, is inside a fridge right now, and it's it's um, showing that the fridge is four point thirty one degrees Celsius. So if this uh, temperature goes over seven, or somebody uh, forgot the door open, or Maybe the, the seal on the door is not working, so you have uh, you'll be notified. And you can see here the battery level for the for the module. And I will show you a quick demo of this uh, this notification that I talked about. I created a, a device emulator just to to show you guys because I, I don't want to wait for the device to send data. And I'm going to show you how to share this data. So. I am here in this device emulator. We have the MC track and the MC mod. 
uh, developers can use this to to develop their, their applications. And I'm going to share these, uh, this dashboard with another account. So I can share it here. Tutorials at Tago. And then I invite this person to use this dashboard. So if I go to this account, Tutorials Tago, you can see here that I have a notification. And this is a sharing request. Tom wishes to share a dashboard with you. So I'll accept this, this dashboard. And here, I can see that we have uh, the folder webinar, and then devices emulator. Let me just close this. So uh, I cannot do anything because this is a shared device, this is a shared dashboard. I cannot change the, the orientation, add more widgets, because I'm, I've just been shared with. If you see in here, this is the owner's account. Uh, we can add more widgets, for example, I can click here, or I can remove widgets and uh, change their size. Okay, so if I go to the fridge demo as the application, just go over here, okay. So uh, if I go here to this fridge demo, see that it, the, the fridge is sending the temperature, now it's 4.43. And I will send it uh, manually here, 7.1 degrees. So I will submit it. Okay, so it, sa it says here 7.1, and it gave me an, a warning. I, you guys can see right now, but I received a notification on my phone and also in the browser over here. So temperature, temperature warning. The temperature is 7.1. I can ignore this or take some action. Uh, also, if... Uh, we can create scripts, for example, if the temperature goes uh, to 7.1 for a long period of time, we can use uh, some of our integrations to to warn someone. For example, we, we have uh, Microsoft Flow templates, and one of the templates that we have, uh, we can uh, open a ticket using Zendesk, that, that is um, uh, a software to to create tickets for technicians to use or, and a lot of other things. So if I send again four over here, I'll submit it. If you guys see, now I have four over here. And let's see. Uh, so this is uh, the application. If you guys want to publish the application, we will be happy to, to help you publish this. For example, I could uh, create this application in, in our Explorer over here. And if you guys just bought uh, a sensor like that, you can install and type the, the serial number of the sensor, and then you have this application on your, on your account. Um, so this is the demo for the, for the, the application. And uh, just a second. So I'll I'll show you the website where you can help you can have more resources over there. So for example, if you go to the website over here and we have the developer options, you can see our documentation on how to build this, how to get started with Tago, our concepts, tutorials, and anything else. And then if you want to to build application, we have the the Node.js and we have a Java SDK as well. And this is our public repositories, as, as Fabio said. We have uh, a lot of applications over there if you want to download them and see how it works. Just a second. Okay, so uh, going back to the presentation now, just a second. Do you guys have any questions about this, uh, the demo? Okay, so I will pass it to Fabio right now, and then we can talk about the what what's coming next in our Q Q and A. So, Fabio. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Roberto. Thanks for the explanation presentation. 
before we go to Q&A, uh, just to share a little bit about what's coming. So some of the things that we are going to release uh, is still this week is the icon widget. So we have been received a lot of requests about uh, what about have a widget that I can have a, a drawing representation like a battery, antenna, uh, level, things like that. So we are going to release this this week. Also, we already created a connector for Microsoft Flow for those who are not aware about Microsoft Flow is because it's brand new. I think it's less than one year in the marketplace. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, yeah, FT, uh, FTT if it is than that, but as a, it is Microsoft is really business. So we integrated for them. We already have applications with them. So you can uh, set up things in the calendar. You can open tickets like for using Zendesk or ServiceNow if something goes wrong with your device, for example. So you can do this by integrating with Targo. I think that's an amazing uh, opportunity here for business, real business. Also, we are planning to have a, a widget where you can scale in real time the, the values uh, in the dashboards. For example, if you have uh, your temperature in Celsius and uh, you want to just to change for Fahrenheit, uh, not to change the real value in the database, just uh, the visualization, uh, that will be possible in the short future. Uh, Thomas, do you want to add anything from your side about what's coming uh, next? Yeah, thanks, Fabio. So we have a whole bunch of things in, the, in our pipeline here at MC Things, uh, but I wanted to point out a couple that are, I think are pertinent to this webinar and this conversation. So we are actually going to build in uh, down the road here a customized Tago integration. So this is where in MC Cloud you would create an integration, you'd actually click on the Tago icon, and it would be set up specifically um, the exact requirements and fields required to get the data into Tago. So that'll be coming down the pipe here shortly and it'll kind of finish our, our nice partnership that, that uh, um, when it comes to integrating and creating IoT solutions together. One of the other things we're going to be putting together within our MC Cloud is two-way APIs. Um, now this is really interesting. If you want to build your own solution for your clients or maybe it's for your own business, whatever it might be, um, right now, as you saw through my presentation there, you do have to go into MC Cloud and, and manage your devices that way. We will be building other APIs where an application like Tago uh, or others where you can actually send commands from your portal in directly into MC Cloud, which can then send commands to the devices. So as an example, um, and hopefully this is something that will come down the road here fairly soon, uh, what I'd like to envision is that in Tago, you could say, send a new program to this device. I want to measure temperature every minute instead of every five minutes. You would actually do that in the Tago portal or their cloud, and that information would go directly into MC Cloud, into your security domain, and then send new programming to, down to your device. So you could actually do that from the Tago application and not necessarily from MC Cloud. So what really nice there is that it adds another level of scalability and versatility to the MC Cloud platform and allows us to work a little bit closer uh, with our partners. And really as end users or, or the clients uh, using MC Things, it should help to make things a bit more efficient and reduce the number of stops or clicks that you have to do within different applications. So that's kind of the couple things that are coming down the pipe from us. And I guess I'll, I'll send it back to Fabio here so we can talk about uh, or get some questions and answers going. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Thomas. So we are open now for Q&A. If you have any question or comment, uh, please uh, just uh, type in the chat screen so we can uh, get from, from you guys and share with the team here. Uh, I see one here uh, asking about if you can connect uh, Tagu with uh, my industrial devices. And yes, basically, uh, we had no time to talk about that, but we have our uh, APIs uh, and uh, MQTT, HTTP, and so on, very well documented. You can go and look for the at the develop, developer page, and you'll get a lot of information there. Uh, however, we also have uh, private middleware. So what that means that sometimes customers come to us and say, hey, I have my device, I have uh, you know, this device for years, I use UDP, TCP, I don't want to change. And okay, we create a middleware in the middle, 
to read that information and uh, convert to Tago. That works pretty well. Also, in other times, uh, we uh, have it just to acquire a hardware that to make the conversion between uh, the industrial protocol to standard uh, like a uh, uh, multibus, profit bus that goes to Tago. That's also a possibility. Uh, there is a question here, maybe Thomas, uh, that would be more for you. Uh, for sure, Marilio. yes. Mm -hmm. Question from uh, Marilio there. Is there any power management systems that can be managed through Tego using that device? And I assume you're talking about either the MC Mod 120 or the MC Track 330. So the answer is yes, uh, likely. Um, there's multiple different power management systems out there. So it's a matter of looking at that system you want to work with. Um, and then deciding how do you manage that using one of our devices. Um, quickly, just to give some additional info, all of our devices have uh, multiple different interfaces built in. So we have uh, I2C, UART, and SPI interfaces built into each device. Um, but kind of tacking on to what Fabio was just saying there, you can work with all sorts of other different types of interfaces with our devices. For example, we don't have a Modbus plugin, but what you could do is look for a, a, a middle board that could talk on one of the interfaces we provide, let's say, for example, UART, and have a different connection on the other side of that board. So a lot of times it's a matter of looking at the specific requirements, what are the technical requirements that we need to connect to, and then just figuring out the small engineering challenge of how do we connect to that power management system, and what do you want to do with it. So if you do have any additional questions or want to talk about, uh, you know, a specific technical solution or anything like that, you can also send us an email at info at mcthings.com or as you see up there, there's also my email address and, and I can uh, address any specific questions that you might have. Okay, and just to tack on to that, I see Marilio is saying to make the device battery to last longer. So. One thing, and maybe I was misunderstanding the question, so my apologies. Um, one of the things we've done in our device, the power management is already built in. So as I mentioned previously, there is no firmware to write. We've already pre-written the firmware. So you work on the software side and program the device on how often you want to measure things, where is that information going. Now, there is options that you can customize where you can actually reduce um, certain beacons and other default functions that we have in our device to increase the battery life. Just to give you an example, that one little device that uh, Roberto was showing, the MC Mod 120, that device is powered by a coin cell battery. Now, if I take a temperature every couple of minutes, let's say two or five minutes, that device should last probably up to three or even five years on a coin cell battery, just sending temperature alone. Now, the more often you ask the device to do something, the more power draw. But to answer your question, I guess, Marilio, is that you can program the device to last a very short amount of time if you ask it to do a lot of functions. You can also program those devices to last possibly up to 10 years um, if you're not doing a lot of, of checking or sampling of, of your variables. So as an example, if you checked a temperature every day on that MC Track 330 device, uh, likely you would be at least at that 7 to 10 year uh, battery life with two AA batteries. So hopefully that, uh, that helps explain that question there. Hmm. Okay. So that, yeah, good. So that is also another question from Sergio. Uh, can you explain more details how the virtual device works? Uh, device. Okay. Uh, uh, first, I think uh, Roberto made a mention about virtual device. What that means is that uh, at the toggle, when you click there and say, uh, I'm creating a device, in fact, uh, it's not a real device, right? It's a, a, it's a path, it's a virtualization of that device. Because basically, if you have a real device outside and you want to send the data, you need to grant access to that device. And uh, if you take a look at our documentation, you, you see that basically uh, there are some basic things to be followed, but you need a key, you need a token. So when you go to Tago and uh, you create their device, you get a token. Okay, so Hobart, maybe you could just show the screen uh, in the token uh, to make it just easier. Uh, and then you get this token and add in your device. Okay, 
but that that's one way to answer uh, your question and also that is another one is that uh, maybe it's what to ask like a device emulator that uh Robert is showing there is uh our system basically works well with data buckets so all the data is inside of our data uh the database that you call bucket so if you want to simulate a device you don't want to use a device because maybe you don't have it yet uh, or you are you want to simulate several devices so what you can do is uh, basically post the data using a widget that goes uh, to the bucket so uh, what to hope to showing here right now is in the device you are able to get the token here when you get this token you need to follow documentation and you can post the data using this token that's a secret uh, a number there in this case not a secret anymore right but yeah that's the point um, so, um, uh, and back to Serge about the second point, maybe what he's asking is that uh, you are able to get, uh, um, create a widget that are going to send the data to the uh, bucket. So that's another way to, you make think uh, uh, that's not a real uh, to the base, okay, uh, database. And the third option here quickly, you can, uh, we have a nice documentation about that. You can collect the data from spreadsheets, from Google Sheets, for example. You can simulate the data coming from a spreadsheet. That's very helpful. So when they're building the solution, you want, for example, use a MC Things model, great, use it. Then you can say, hey, uh, but my location, the truck is moving in Canada, in Mexico. So you can use a spreadsheet, row by row, and acquiring that data, let's say every one minute or X seconds, and uh, populated that. So it give you a good sense for you for your application. That's very helpful when you try to sell the IoT solution. It looks like uh, we don't have any question. If you have, we still have two minutes. No, there's, uh, there's one more question there from Sergio. And I not sure if it's for okay. me or for you. How about I'll take it on my side and then you can answer from your side, just in case. So Sergio, if you're asking about that with MC things, um, right now we don't create or work with Laura. Now it's not, it's, it's not something that we couldn't do. Um, we, we do work with Sigfox. So for us, if somebody came to us and said, hey, we've got a, a really great solution or we, we need a specialized customized device that speaks on Laura network instead of Sigfox, uh, for us, we can actually absolutely look at that, and it would just be a matter of uh, changing out the, the radio. So switching out a Sigfox radio, putting a LoRa radio, and sending information out that way. Um, but I'll, I'll leave the, the uh, Fabio to answer it with uh, the Tago side of things. Okay, yeah, if uh, it's about a cloud uh, solution, Tago, yes, uh, we do have, we have uh, many applications for LoRa. In fact, uh, because you have a satellites, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, you name it, uh, Z-Wave and so on. Um, so basically, or you can contact me or Roberto in the email above, and they can give you details. But basically, yes. Um, and we have seen applications where they use the, the traditional gateways. In the other case, I know about some application running with Tag where the company designed their own gateway as well, based in Raspberry Pi or, or other boards. So the answer is yes, it's compatible. Uh, however, uh, we need to just understand exactly uh, which service you're talking about, right? Uh, but it, it can be accomplished if it hasn't been yet implemented. So let me just take, talk about the, the Laura for a second. Uh, we we have a lot of uh, of applications using Laura, as Fabio said, and uh, for devices like Laura or Sigfox, they usually send some uh, some binary code as data. So you can use Tago to receive this code, and as I showed you on on our analysis, you can create an analysis or uh, to to take this uh, this code and parse this data to Tago. So it, in, in a few minutes, you can you can have a LoRa device or a Sigfox, Sigfox device sending data, this data being parsed to Tago in real time, and then being showed as um, 
as real data in, in, in our regions. So it's a very easy thing to do. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a very good point, Robert. So we can parse the data in real time, so you don't need to build the servers in the middle. Yeah, so we have done a lot of that. Yep, good point. Okay, uh, if you don't have any question, uh, I think, uh, and I hope, of course, that uh, we cover well the topics here that uh, uh, can add value for you. Uh, and um, we're really very glad uh, you guys could attend it. We have uh, our emails here. So feel free to contact us uh, with any questions. So also, we are going to make this video available uh, later, and uh, you'll be notified about that. Thomas, anything else? No, I just <laughs> want to thank everybody for the time. I know uh, doing this on a, on a Tuesday, uh, hopefully uh, you know, it didn't cut into too much of your day. But really do appreciate you listening. Of, of MC Things and Tago and how we can work together and, and help you to create IoT solutions. So as Fabio mentioned, feel free to email us at the emails above. Also check out our websites to learn a little bit more or get a bit more in-depth information. And uh, we really do appreciate the time. Thank you very much for attending today. Okay. Thank you.